We have got so much coming up for you guys this week. Jordan and Kimbo visited our Easter soccer schools. David Marshall had a photo shoot for his glove sponsors. And Fraser made somebody's Easter that little bit better by surprising a fan with a visit to his house. But first, we took a look back to last weekend's victory over Southampton and facing Stoke this weekend. We need points and uh, obviously we're three points behind Norwich but worst goal difference so we'll, we'll need four points more than, uh, than them. Uh, we're four points behind West Brom and Swansea so they're, they're also in this. Looking around though, I mean it's quite cliché that players and managers alike often say no, it's about our games, we're concentrating on just us. But when the table's so tight, I mean, if take, take Norwich for example, their final four running, it is a tough running for them. How hard is it to look just us? I mean, do you keep an eye on all the other teams as well? Uh, you, you only concentrate on our performance, obviously, but of course you look at the other teams' games and you look at Sunderland last night against City. There's surprise results everywhere, so you cannot say, OK, that's, an, that's a three-pointer, that's a one-point. It's, it's impossible in this league, so we've just got to make sure that teams around us start worrying about us as well. The gaffer continued to express his relief at getting those three points and keeping a clean sheet against Southampton last weekend. Now for me, I was delighted with the performance because we did play against a very good team with very good players that uh, we're looking up to, to be, uh, to be honest, because uh, Dave Southampton's been uh, a role model in the, in the way that they've changed the type of football, they've changed Gradually now they've gone from League One to Championship, now they're a top 10 Premier League club. And of course the clean sheet lends itself perfectly to yet more David Marshall praise. Yeah, David's been fantastic. He's, he's, he's been uh, without a doubt our top performer this year. Uh, you can see all the, the amount of saves he's had to make and to save points for us and he did again. Uh, down to his left that was fantastic, he came out to smother Gallagher once. But he's, he's really developed, I feel, as well, because uh, he's maturing, he's growing, he becomes more of a leader. And that's even the next step for him to become even more of a leader. And there's more coming up from Ali later in the show, so keep watching. Our Easter soccer schools are well underway. Kimbo joined Jordan in visiting the young participants. Jordan was on hand for a catch-up and spoke about his personal performances during his debut season at the top level. You know, I've been working hard over the, the, the past four or five years. I've been, um, you know, in the professional kind of um, leagues and that. And um, this season has been great for me and I've just been putting in that hard work. And um, I'm delighted with how it's gone. Um, but I want Cardiff City to stay in the Premier League. And, you know, I think that'll be a massive achievement come the end of the season we, we do that. Yeah, you know, I've enjoyed playing behind Fraser a lot this season. And I think we've formed quite a good like partnership, um, you know, knowing each other's movements and that. And um, hopefully I can keep on playing behind him um, in the next few games coming. Or even deeper, you know, the, the manager dropped me in there um, with like 30 minutes to go and I, I enjoy that too. I'm just en enjoying playing in this league and um, hopefully I can keep Cardiff City um, in it. We also spoke to Kim and asked him if he feels the pressure or is there a spark of excitement for the run-in. Ironically, in a season where we've put the performances in and left with nothing, Kim went on to enforce the winning is more important than a performance at this stage in the season. 근데 사우스 센터 경기는 굉장히 좀 경기력적인 면에서 굉장히 어려운 부분이 많이 있었고 경기하면서 많이 느꼈고 하지만 음, 축구라는 것 자체가 그런 상황에서 선수들의 의지와 그런 팬 팬들의 그런 의지가 보인다면 분명히 그런 결과를 낼수 있는 거고 뭐 지금 경기력적인 면도 중요하지만 결과도 그만큼 중요하기 때문에 일단은 그렇게라도 선전을 일단 모으는 게더 크다고 생각하고 있습니다. David Marshall was at Cardiff City Stadium for a photo shoot with his glove sponsors earlier in the week. Speaking at the event, he looked back to last weekend's performance and his emotions upon the final whistle. It was just relief, I think. Um, I think everybody had wrote us off in the, after the Crystal Palace game. We felt we'd let the, the fans down and ourselves down for the, the past few games, so 
as I say, it was just that relief to finally get three points. We're yet to achieve it, but a back-to-back -back win this Saturday would be a great time to make it happen. And our keeper knows it. It makes such a difference. It can get you out of, out of trouble. Um, I don't think we've done it this season, back-to-back -back victory. So we've got a good chance now. We've disappointed in some home games that we've obviously expected ourselves to win, like Palace and Hull. So we know how difficult it's going to be. Stoke are one of the informed teams in the league. But if we can get that back-to-back -back result, it puts us in a right good chance. Following yet more recognition and praise, this week coming from Peter Shilton, Marshall remained humble as ever and insists on focusing on the matter in hand. I don't really enjoy that sort of party. I mean, it's uh, you just try to focus in, uh, on the team and try to try to trying to stay up because it's we've all enjoyed being in the league. It's been hard at times. Um, I mean, the club took so long to get there, but um, as a team, we've done well last year. And as I say, we'll just try to focus and staying up because we've enjoyed it that much and. Obviously, once you get that taste for it, staying in the Premier League, you're desperate to do it. We welcomed the Norwegian national manager, Per Matthias Hogmo, to Cardiff, and he gave us a little insight into the purpose of his visit to the Welsh capital. Well, I'm here to, to visit Ole Gunnar and uh, to see the Norwegian players. And it's always interesting to, to come to a good club and, and look at it. He continued to share his thoughts on the rising young talent of our Mats Muller daily. Well, he did a great game last against Czech Republic in the draw and uh, he showed its potential and it's um, a player who can really, really go far. And um, what he has been doing so far here in Cardiff, I think uh, he, he showed a way of playing football who is, is great and his mental very tough. So I expect a lot of him, him in the future, yes. Fraser surprised a young fan, Rhys Barkley, this week and spoke to us about the afternoon. It was great, um, you know, sometimes you forget what it means to young people. It feels like it was ages ago since I was that little kid, but yeah, it was great to uh, surprise him and you know, just hang out with him for a few hours and you know, get to know him a bit. Think back to when you were 12, if you could have had any player walk into your back garden, who would it have been? Someone, someone better than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe someone like John Barnes or Andy Cole or something like that. And a date for your diary, Wednesday the 23rd of April. The development will play Crew Alexandra in the PDL playoff semi-final. This is the swanky new Cardiff City team bus from Edwards Coaches. Thought we'd give you a sneak peek? How's that for travelling in style? Cardiff City's women team beat Port Talbot last Friday 2-0. This week, Barclay has brought 15 fans here to watch those guys in action and meet their heroes in a Q&A session as part of the Barclays Thank You, You Are Football initiative. What is the best game, like asking all of you, that you've all played in? Probably the FA Cup final in 99, to be able to play at Old Wembley for 90 minutes, that was great for me. This was my testimony. <laughs> 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 Uh, Carling Cup final probably, barring the result. Turns obviously got the uh, equaliser quite late on, and it went on to penalties. And it was um, it was just a great day all round. It was the atmosphere and the amount of people that were there, and for us to come back and defy the odds a little bit, it was a great achievement for us. Cup final. <laughs> <laughs> just obviously, it makes you want to try and try and get there again. Just that kind of uh, stage. But then. On a positive one, when we got promoted, obviously the, the fans were on the pitch and it was real. It was like a, more of a victory, whereas the cup final didn't actually end in a victory. The day we got promoted, um, even though we we only drew the game, nil nil, the, the experience of it and you know the the relief when the final whistle went and all the fans you know invading the pitch, it's something I'll. I'll never forget in my lifetime. They often get asked it, so tell us boys, if you were footballers, what would you be? Well, my dad's a builder and that, so I probably would have just gone into something like that with him. Just hitting walls down or something like that. Um, I'm not sure, I probably would have done the whole uni thing. Um, three years, did all freshers and stuff like that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I probably would have enjoyed that. Yeah, the same, I, I probably would have gone to uni. I kind of, that was my backup plan. But, um, <laughs> Although football, I've always, wanted to be a footballer and you know you always think you're going to be a footballer especially when you you sign scholarship forms and stuff at a club but my second dream I know it's a bit weird but I wanted to be a joiner 
Here's a good one. If they could pick any player to play with for any club and at any stadium, what would be their dream match? Roy Keane. At Old Trafford in a Champions League final <laughs> for Man United. Maybe John Barnes at Anfield. Cristiano Ronaldo at Real Madrid. Zidane. Um, Birmingham City. <laughs> <laughs> I want two. I want Zidane and Gaza in his prime. Wembley, World Cup final. Looking ahead to the weekend, Oli spoke of his approach to facing Stoke City. Oh, we've got to be positive, we've got to be committed. Same uh, mentality as we had against Southampton, to stick together as a team. Uh, everyone do their own jobs to the best of their capabilities and then that glues into 11 men uh, performing together. So uh, they're a very good uh, team at the moment. They've, I think they won four out of the last five or something, one of the top uh, uh, informed teams. They've got Crouchy, as we know, uh, he's always difficult to handle. Anatovic, the left winger, he's a top, top player. And of course, we all know Peter Odenwingi, he can do anything on a football pitch. So uh, we've got to be uh, alert. How about injuries? How are you looking for...? Uh... Obviously, Nuni is out. He's uh, out for the best... I think he's out for the rest of the season. He's got an outside chance, maybe, for the last game against Chelsea. So. Let's see how he progresses. Uh, I don't think we got any more knocks from uh, the game the other day, so I think we'll be fine. <laughs>